I want there to be gutters because I don't want to have to walk underneath a bunch of dripping rain when it's raining season. And uh, I would additionally like to be able to have the water on this property travel toward the creek in a lot more uh, effective pattern rather than let the mud get everywhere around the structure. So I'm installing gutters and we run into a lot of problems with gutters. They're really flimsy sheet metal. They might be painted mild steel, maybe galvanized painted mild steel. And they're basically doomed to be replaced. And that is not the way that I like to do construction. Um, because I absolutely hate construction and I don't want to have to do it again. So, trying to build things right and so, in the search for a decent gutter, I found a material at a scrapyard. Um, now, you may choose perhaps maybe six or eight inch aluminum irrigation pipe. It's pretty thick. Uh, however, it is aluminum, and in your gutters, if you're going to be lazy like me and not really clean your gutters very often, uh, you're going to have a bunch of decomposing matter. And the pH range of that decomposing matter may be out of the scope of the safe pH range for the oxide layer that forms on aluminum and makes it such a durable material. So you're going to get a pretty much pretty strongly wider pH range for stainless steel. And if you can find stainless steel pipes of adequate diameter to cut into gutters, it may be worth your while to use them. Now it's going to be a pain in the ass if you're not used to working with this crap. It's certainly going to be a lot more durable. Um, you're going to run into about two-thirds coefficient of thermal expansion on the stainless steel pipe as you are on the vinyl pipe. So lengths over, I don't know, 10 feet or so really ought to have expansion and contraction worked into the fastening system so that the, uh, the pipe doesn't work your fasteners loose over time and you don't have to be messing with that. You're going to need downspout as well. So you got this six inch pipe and you've got a uh, four inch uh, mandrel bent stainless pipe to uh, work with from the scrap yard as well. Um, but the fastening system that I thought of, uh, maybe you can find out something better and, and describe it for me. I can link to your video or something. Uh, but the fastening system that I thought of basically involves um, some, toward the edges, some larger holes. Uh, maybe allowing for about a quarter inch of expansion and contraction over a uh, 26 foot, 24 foot distance. And that, I think that should uh, work out pretty well. Um, So on this pipe we have a bunch of knickknacks got to take off. It's tough to cut this 304 stainless. You end up running into uh, the fact that you're running out of wheels, aluminum oxide grinding wheels. Finding that uh, diamond wheels are working slower but uh, for longer. So if you can find those at a garage sale, you'll save some money. Unfortunately, I uh, paid retail for that one. And, uh, but what can you do when you run out? Um, so we've got to cut all this crap off. And then what we'll end up having is the pipes looking like that. Mark the top on either side. Measure the circumference of the pipe. Divide that in half. And then uh, half of that circumference around. Make your other line. And snap chalk lines between 
the lines on the top and the bottom. In the interests of cost, I will be using a 14 inch wheel, which I found at a garage sale, um, on this cutter. It presents a variety of hazards, both because the rated RPM of this grinder is greater than the maximum rated RPM of the wheel, and because the attachment mechanism of the wheel is extraordinarily less sturdy and stable than the wheel is designed for. Uh, those two together make it pretty awkward, and uh, I would strongly recommend if you're using this, keeping your eyes away from the wheel, keeping your hands away from the wheel, because if it shatters, it's going to be pretty bad. And uh, if you don't know how to use these things very well, don't put a lot of tension uh, the wrong way on the wheel. Uh, if you follow that, you should be pretty okay, but uh, maybe don't exceed the maximum RPM of the wheel, because that's, that's pretty bad. But here goes anyway. To weld the two sections of pipe together, we're using a specialty welding electrode, and we're clamping it uh, on either side of the intersection rather tightly so that the two sections remain flat, and any spots that will deviate, such as this bent area that used to have a pipe attached, clamping shut at the weld. And past that, go on YouTube and learn how to weld, because this is not the place to learn. Usually at the edge of a, of a house, you see what's called a drip edge. And it basically takes water away from the edge of the roof. And oftentimes it will drip back onto the fascia board and you end up getting a bunch of rotten fascia board. And you just don't want wood getting wet because wood is freaking organic material and it's food. So, you want a drip edge, ideally, that basically makes sure all of the water doesn't get soaked into the wood. You want a drip edge that, well, covers your entire fascia board, don't you? Unless you care about aesthetics and conformity. But, uh, you know, fuck that noise. So, to get a, a, a drip edge to go all the way around, it would be pretty simple with aluminum flashing to just bend it around, make sure there's a, a lip at the bottom so that the drips come off and, and don't kind of soak back up into the, the later edge of the board. Um, it would be pretty simple to do that, but when you're adding boards at the base and having it jut out, you're gonna have to bend the flashing into that area. If you're using skinny flashing, that's going to be easy to bend by hand, but listen to that sound. That is a chunk of flashing. And that's what I'm limited to here. Now we're trying to bend the flashing up into position. Do you hammer it with a smooth face hammer? percent of my eardrums used up later? The answer is basically no. You don't hammer it in. There's a much easier, faster sheet metal brake.
self-tapping stainless screws. They're applied at least every 16 inches along the top. Okay, the inner diameter of these is approximately six inches. Knock the little pins out. These ones look about like this. You can infer that the gutter will be spaced out a bit from the edge of the board. Um, they've got large holes in here to accept everything you're going to need to fasten the screw and the screw fastens through these holes they're awfully sturdy um, alternatively if you wanted to spend a little more time cutting you could cut the pipe at an angle and weld it flush with here and then you'd have less of a gap between the angle bracket and the gutter or you could even weld it to here or so downward and chop this off which would leave you pretty darn flush to the side of the house. Okay, I've snapped an angled line which drops about four inches over 26 feet from end to end and uh, hung two gutter hangers that will hold the gutter up there for a one-man hang before I screw it in. Put the ladder into the center of the garage, grab, find the center of the gutter and lift onto the hangers. You'll notice there's a bit of a bow in that, and you can just correct that with screws, or I suppose put another hanger. I might put another hanger. pieces but it sucks. Stainless sink to the tube and then weld the tube um, oops weld the tube there and that's half of a stainless tube uh, drawing the water. Yep ready. Ah, it flattened. <laughs>